Welcome to Only Facts. Today we'll explore the spookiest, creepiest historical photos in honor of October. Let's get started. The young girl seen in this 1970 photo is Jeannie Wiley of California, otherwise known as the Feral Child, barely able to walk at age 13. For her entire life, her father had abused her viciously, keeping her in a makeshift straitjacket and tying her to a children's toilet in a locked room all day. When she made any sound or did anything he didn't like, he'd growl and bare his teeth at her like a dog. Under such brutal conditions, Wiley never learned how to walk or speak. When this creepy photo was taken at a hospital just after she was rescued, her life inside a series of abusive institutions was only beginning. Her whereabouts today are unknown. The trophy heads of the Maori. Long before European colonizers arrived in New Zealand, the native Maori people were preserving the severed heads of the fallen. Known as Mokomokai, the heads were chopped off, boiled, smoked, dried in the sun, and dipped in shark oil before being displayed or paraded around like trophies. But when the British moved in during the 1840s, they soon pillaged the Mokomokai for themselves. Major General Horatio Gordon Robley, featured in this creepy old picture with his collection, who served in the British Army during the New Zealand Land Wars in the 1860s, was particularly fascinated by the Maori and stole at least 35 heads for himself. Anatoly Moskvin is a Russian former journalist, college professor, and self-dubbed necropolist with expert knowledge of cemeteries. For years, his hobby of collecting dolls hit a macabre obsession that drew upon his particular interests, digging up the dead and making dolls out of their corpses. After making his human dolls, he kept them in his home as his companions and lovers. I kissed her once, then again, then again, Moskvin wrote about one of his dolls, made from the body of an 11-year-old girl? Police finally caught Moskvin in 2011, after years of increasing suspicion at the growing number of desecrated graves in his home city of Nizhny Novgorod. When they searched his home, they found 26 life-sized dolls, or rather, mummified corpses, scattered throughout. The 25-Year Captivity of Blanche Monnier when French authorities received an anonymous tip in 1901 that a woman was being held prisoner at an aristocrat's house in the city of Poitiers, they sent out officers to search the home. Behind the locked door of the pitch-black attic, they found a skeletal middle-aged woman lying on a straw mattress laden with her own excrement while insects and rotting food littered the floor. The room's odor was so rank that officers couldn't even continue their investigation. But they were able to learn that the 55-pound woman still clinging to life after 25 years, trapped in that same room, was named Blanche Monnier, and that her captor was her own mother. Victorian Postmortem Portraits Life expectancies in Victorian England were tragically low due to the high frequency of disease and lack of proper medical treatment. And because photography was extremely expensive, most people were never able to get their portrait taken. So, when young children passed away, their parents often dressed them in their finest clothes to sit for their first portrait, creating eerily lifelike images of kids who had already been gone for days. Annalisa Michel was a devout Catholic teenager living a normal life with her parents in Germany in the late 1960s. But then she began blacking out at school before exhibiting increasingly strange behaviors like routinely convulsing, hallucinating, eating spiders, and even drinking her own urine. Michelle claimed to be possessed by the devil, and her parents soon came to the same conclusion. They ultimately subjected her to 67 exorcisms, none of which improved her condition before she died of malnutrition at age 23 in 1976, weighing just 68 pounds. Her story was so disturbing 
that it eventually inspired the 2005 horror film The Exorcism of Emily Rose. On the morning of July 2, 1951, in St. Petersburg, Florida, Mary Reeser's landlady went to the old woman's apartment to deliver a telegram and noticed that her door was warm to the touch. Upon opening the door, she found Reeser almost completely reduced to a pile of ashes lying on the scorched remnants of her chair. A part of her left leg and her skull, shrunken far beyond its normal size, were all that remained. Local authorities were unable to determine any cause of the blaze, and the rest of the apartment was largely devoid of fire damage. When they sent the case to the FBI, they determined that Reeser had gone up in flames like the wick of a candle, with her own body fat steadily feeding the fire. But they too were baffled as to how the blaze started in the first place. To this day, it's widely believed that this was a case of spontaneous human combustion. Michael Rockefeller, center, the son of New York governor and soon-to-be U.S. Vice President Nelson Rockefeller, disappeared somewhere in Papua New Guinea in the early 1960s. Seen here on his first trip there in May 1960, Rockefeller's smile belies his grim fate. It's believed he was killed and eaten by the Azmat people, a cannibal group known to behead their enemies and consume their flesh. Truck Stop Killer Robert Ben Rhodes may have killed more than 50 women while driving commercial trucks back and forth across America throughout the 1970s and 80s. But perhaps his most chilling murder is the one believed to be his last, just before Rhodes murdered 14-year-old Regina K. Walters in an Illinois barn in early 1990, he took a series of photos of her cowering in fear as he moved in for the kill. Authorities found this photo and a collection of others like it inside Rhodes's home after he was finally caught several months later. On August 6, 1945, the United States of America dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, and for some of the approximately 80,000 people who lost their lives, only a nuclear shadow remained. When the bomb detonated at 1,900 feet above the city center, the subsequent explosion caused temperatures of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit to annihilate nearly everything within 1,600 feet of the bomb's blast zone. Almost anything and anyone within a mile was destroyed. The bomb's light and heat were so extreme that they bleached the city's exposed surfaces, except in places where an unsuspecting person shielded the building or sidewalk or bridge from the blast with their own body in their final moments alive. Hundreds of young girls and women who worked in American watch factories during the 1920s were exposed to so much radium that they came home glowing in the dark. The prolonged exposure to radium, used in the luminous paint that coated the watch faces, caused their vertebrae to collapse, their jaws to swell up and fall off, and their lives to slowly end in agony while battling cancer. Before American serial killer John Wayne Gacy was finally caught in 1978, he raped, tortured, and murdered at least 33 teenage boys and men in his Illinois home. But long before his murderous reign, during which he worked as a clown at children's birthday parties, John Wayne Gacy was just a normal boy. However, knowing what was to come after this photo was taken makes it one of the most undeniably creepy images of all time. On November 13, 1985, a volcanic eruption sent an enormous mudslide through the village of Armero, Colombia, trapping 13-year-old Omira Sanchez in the debris. She was immediately pinned down by the wreckage of her own house, with only her head and arms above the floodwaters. For almost three days, Rescuers tried in vain to free her as she slowly succumbed to gangrene and hypothermia in the water. Finally, on November 16, she passed away as helpless relief workers watched from mere feet away. Just before she died, photographer Frank Fournier captured this haunting image. 
Cornier later recalled that he felt totally powerless in front of this little girl, who was facing death with courage and dignity. And finally, when police finally caught serial killer Ed Gein in 1957, they found a trove of grim evidence that revealed the horrors of his years of grave robbing, murder, necrophilia, and cannibalism. Officers' search of Gein's Wisconsin home turned up furniture and kitchen utensils made from human remains, a gutted corpse in his shed, a belt fashioned out of human nipples, and jars of organs. Though Gein was quickly locked away in an institution for the rest of his life, the creepy photos taken in his home remain chilling to this day. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this content, please make sure to subscribe. Here are some videos we think you'll like.